lubrication and cooling system, and types of lubricants. Objectives Understand why lubrication is needed, how lubrication is done in motor vehicles, understand why cooling is necessary, how cooling is done in vehicles. Engine cooling Some form of cooling must be provided to take away the heat from the cylinder and working parts of an engine. This heat comes from combustion of the fuel and friction between rubbing parts. An uncooled engine would result in seizure of working parts due to heat expansion, excessive wear, the oil would be burned, pre-ignition of the petrol-air mixture. This means that the mixture would be ignited before time by some red-hot particle in the combustion chamber. There are two methods of cooling, air, liquid, air cooling. Most motorcycle engines are air cooled. The principle is to fin the cylinder so as to increase the area of the hot surface exposed to the flow of cool air. This method of cooling is cheap, lightweight and is not subjected to troubles such as leakage and freezing problems. Airflow for cooling a multi-cylinder engine is provided by a centrifugal fan. This forces the air through the ducted passages and over the fan cylinders. Thermostat This is a heat-sensitive valve that controls the water temperature by altering the speed of circulation. It is generally fitted on the engine side of the top hose and is preset to stop the water flow to the radiator when the coolant temperature is less than 80 degrees Celsius. Cooling System Maintenance the normal unsealed coolant system should have the coolant level checked and topped up with pure water if possible at weekly intervals. Regular inspection should be made for 1. Leakage of coolant especially after filling with antifreeze. 2. Cracking or hardening of the flexible hoses. 3. Tightness of the fan belt. 4. Operating pressure of the radiator cap. 5 correct functioning of the thermostat. Engine lubrication. The friction between two surfaces rubbing together is reduced by using a lubricant to separate the materials. A flow of oil used for this purpose can also be used to carry away an excess heat from the metal parts. The majority of the engines are wet sump system in which the engine sump acts as the reservoir. The friction between the engine components are reduced by Boundary lubrication relies on oil being splashed up on the surfaces. Full film lubrication An oil film is maintained by forcing the oil between the surfaces by an oil pump. The main parts of the lubricating system are Pump Driven by camshaft The pump forces the oil from the sump to the main oil gallery. This runs across the length of the engine. Drillings from the gallery allow oil to be supplied to the bearing surfaces. Relief Valve Generally fitted in the gallery, this spring-loaded valve opens when the pressure reaches the maximum limit. Filters Cream that prevents the pieces of metal entering the pump, there is an external filter which can be renewed periodically. Changing engine oil. If the engine is cold, run the engine until it reaches normal operating temperature. Turn off the engine. Remove the oil filter cap and drain plug. Drain the engine oil. 3. Tighten the drain plug to the specified torque. Fill new engine oil through the oil filler cap opening. Note: Do not overfill. This will cause oil aeration and loss of oil pressure. Checking the brake fluid level. Check the level of the brake fluid in the reserve tank of the master cylinder. The level should be between the max and min mark. If the level is lower than the min mark, add fresh brake fluid up to the max mark. Changing brake fluid. Connect a vinyl tube to the bleeder screw of each wheel cylinder. Put the other end of the vinyl tube in a vessel for receiving the brake fluid. With a vehicle equipped with ABS, refer BR section. Depress the brake pedal a few times. Then loosen the bleeder screw and tighten it after the brake fluid stops flowing. 
repeat the above operation until air bubbles are not in the brake fluid. Repeat these steps for the other cylinders. Add fresh brake fluid up to the max level in the reserve tank. Steps of routine servicing of a battery. Make a visual inspection for defective cables, loose connections, corrosion, cracked cases or covers, loose hold downs and deformed or loose terminal posts. All connections should be tightened and replaced if necessary to ensure proper connection. Corrosion or rust on the hold down on the terminal posts and the dirt on the battery should be cleaned using scrapper and wire brush and a cloth soaked in ammonia or baking soda solution. Emery paper may be used to scrape the mating surface of the clamps and the terminals. The electrolyte levels in all the cells should be checked. If necessary, distilled water should be added to bring the electrolyte to the recommended level. Factors which affect battery life. Undercharging, leaving batteries idle, topping up impure water, neglecting topping up, container damage. Specific gravity test. Keep the battery on elevated wooden workbench. Remove all the vent plugs. Hold the hydrometer vertically. Place the nose of the hydrometer in the cell. Ensure that the nose is tipped in the electrolyte. Press the rubber bulb of the hydrometer. Release it to draw the electrolyte upwards. Ensure that the electrolyte does not come into the bulb. Note the float level which is floating in the electrolyte. Record the reading. Repeat the same procedure for all the cells and record the readings. Please note, the reading should not vary more than 25 points between cells. Open circuit voltage test. Connect the leads of the DC voltmeter to the cell terminal. Take the reading from the voltmeter and record. Repeat the procedure for all the cells and record the readings. The voltmeter should read at least 2.2 volts per cell. Recharge, replace the battery if it is in poor condition. High rate discharge test. Hold the handle of the high rate discharge tester. Keep the prods of the high rate discharge tester to individual cell connectors. Press it by hand. Read the voltmeter reading and record in table. The voltmeter should at least read 1.6 to 1.4 volts. Repeat the procedure for all the cells and record the readings. The voltmeter drop should not be more than 1.5 volts in a 6 volts battery with 150 ampere load. 